So soon, ish. Yeah, and yet, in a way, it seems like it's been ages since the last podcast. It feels like it's been ages since we did the last podcast. Well, at least last podcast that anybody heard. <laughs> Ooh, mystery podcast. Uh, <laughs> right. Anyway, hello, we're back, um, and we are going to review Chrissy Hines' latest first solo album by apparently uh, Stockholm, uh, Mastodon, Once More Around the Sun, so a bit of metal. Um, Bob Mole, Beauty and Rain, which is his 11th solo album. Uh, the return of Ice-T and Body Count with Manslaughter. And then we are going to finish off with uh, the fourth album from Sharon Van Etten, Are We There Yet? And the return of Lana Del Rey with her third record, Ultraviolet. So we start off by... Um, is it Ultraviolet or Ultraviolence? Probably Ultraviolence, yeah. <laughs> I know I'm. I know I'm meant to be the one that does the research for this podcast, but yeah, you know, it's been a long week. I've got a bad throat and everything. Oh. Um you've yeah. been busy. Yeah, well, to be fair, yeah, makes me forget things. Yes, it does that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Switching stuff on, you meant to switch on and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But enough of the private jokes that only probably one other person listening will actually understand. Chrissy Hine, Stockholm, first solo album. Um, yeah, I liked it. Well, I find with this album, I'm quite surprised, of course, it's her first solo album. Um, and if you're a, fa- a fan of Chrissy Hine or Pretenders, um, you're going to like this record. Uh, you know, it's 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 what you would expect from, from her. Um, and I, I would say overall, on the plus side, yeah. um, the, the songwriting is, is, is good. It's that classic observational um, song, songwriting style. Yeah. Uh, for which she is known and for which several other um, musicians of her generation are songwriters of her generation known as well um, and and for that reason it kind of keeps it gives it a freshness yeah because I, because on the on the negative side I suppose it does sound like every other album she's been involved with there are, there are certainly of, from recent times there's yeah. certainly elements of that I would agree with that yeah. um, um, so so you know it, it's it's what you would expect. I, I don't think it's going to make great shakes. But having said that, um, the opening couple of tracks I certainly really enjoyed. Yeah. Dark Sunglasses in particular, which of course does that almost a whole observational thing for the older pop star or perhaps observing a younger pop yeah. star. Um, and and there are one or two other uh, strong tracks on there, which I'm not sure, sure you'll mention in a moment. Um, so yeah, I, I, overall, I like this album. Um, it's... I, I still this has been a really tricky podcast yeah I mean, for all sorts of reasons but for the main reason um, is it's actually it's been very hard to sort of really get under the skin of any of this particular uh, set of six mm. yeah I know, I know you're saying about this. more on that later yeah I know you're saying about this this, this, uh, this album it, 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 show, it does show it does show that she still knows how to write a good pop, pop tune after five decades in the, in the, in the business which is the, the positive side but I think highlighting a bit what you were saying it's it's one of those albums where you, you almost want to avoid saying it's it's easy listening but it's, mm. it, but it is kind of easy listening in, in a good way not a bad bad way yeah it's just a record that you can put on only thinking yeah these are nice, nice jaunty pop tunes I say good lyric here and there and, here and there and stuff like that not something that if you're stuck on in the car you're going to alienate anybody that's in the car, car with you kind of thing which is as we'll get on to probably not something you could be said about you put on any of the other five albums <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I'm sure there's quite a few people that would either have strong feelings one way or t'other about the other records we're going to come across and yeah as you're saying Dark Sunglasses which I think was the first or second single firm favourite on Radio 2 but a cracking track uh, also really liked uh, Down the Wrong Way and Plan Too Far mm. also thought were really good songs it's, it's, it's you know Dare I say that thing we always avoid saying, but it's it's a solid record. But solid uh, in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than solid in a kind of meh. Yeah. 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 So moving on, we get on to our, our now regular this this year. This is a theme. I know. 
We had the year when we did lots of folk, the year when we did lots of country, and yeah. this, this year our theme seems to be metal. Metal! Um, <laughs> which is partly due to the lack of albums just full stop coming out when it comes to doing the podcast. Mm. So we did, we got the sixth album by Mastodon. Um, they were one of those bands that I've been aware of, yeah. but without actually being au fait with any of their, their music. So in that sense, I have no idea whether this is... Uh, a progression in their musical sound or if this is how they've sounded on their previous five records um, but this is now an album that's very much in the kind of sound garden now has some chains grunge influenced kind of side of the rock oeuvre um, and uh, that might be partly because of Nick Resolinex I can't see Resolin I can't remember. what's it yeah <laughs> you got it there yeah <laughs> Res rescue 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 oh my word yeah Rescue, oh my word. Yeah, Rescue. Yeah. We've had yeah. some names on this yeah. podcast. That's that's why I should be in the this because because he did the whole Teddy album. And I'm sure I got it right when I said it on that one. But anyway, <laughs> let's refer, back, refer, back. refer back to that one. <laughs> it's that bloke. Anyway, it's the bloke did the whole Teddy album. <laughs> but he also produced some Alice in Chains records, so that's probably why this has an element of sounding like that. Um, it's a bit prog rocky in places, particularly towards the end end of the album. But there are some sing along choruses. And you know it, it's 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 okay when when it's there's a couple of tracks I really like the uh, title track and um, tread lightly also really like um, and when they go a bit more kind of Queens of the Stone Agey on Aunt Lisa that's quite fun and even the opening track uh, which starts off like you start of a mission album mm. uh, which is a bit weird yeah a jangly guitar with mm. lots of um, chorus on and you're thinking oh Wayne Hussey <laughs> that's what he's doing now. But no, it's not. Um, and yeah, so it's it, it. It wouldn't particularly drive me to check out any of their al other albums, especially. But it was it's, it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. Um, a solid record, maybe, maybe more on the side of near. I think we've listened to a lot, a lot of metal this year, and I think I've preferred other metal. Yeah. I'm thinking back, in particular, to that crazy Polish Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, in particular, which yeah. was which, whilst was completely incomprehensible, was probably. I probably enjoyed more on some sort of kind of perverse level anyway. Um, yeah, Tread Lightly, completely agree. But interesting, you mentioned the whole Steady, because I think it's track two or three. Um, the mus What does make this album interesting is that musically it does step back from the full-on thrash. Yeah. And, and does, oh, I don't want to say middle of the road, but does sort of go into that sort of alt-rock, alt-grunge yeah, territory yeah, yeah, yeah. for which the bands like Hold Steady... Um, I suppose the Pearl Jam comes into my yeah, well, my yeah. mind up during this podcast a couple of times. But um, Pearl, it, it's that sort of sound. So it sort of steps back from being full on metal, and you get more of an old rock guitar thing going on. So, so in in many ways, that actually does keep the interest going because it does vary in style across the album. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, other other track that that caught my attention or 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 made me think more than once <laughs> was uh, I think it's I think it's Chimes at Midnight. Mm. Once more around the sun as well, uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed. And again, I think because it does take that sort of different different turn. Um, only track I really sort of didn't like was the closing track. Yeah, which uh, I have to admit just sort of sent me to sleep after a couple of minutes. It was just so repetitive. And as other ones says, it's, it's called Diamond in the Witch House. Yeah, and, and it sounds exactly like a song called Diamond in the Witch House. Nice. It's going to sound <laughs> yeah, really exactly. You know. <laughs> It really does, people. It's a shame, really, because it lets you down. The, yeah. the album up at that point is all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of kind of um, grungy and indie and stuff, we reach uh, Bob Mould and his 11th solo album. And uh, for those people who don't know who Bob Mould is, he was a uh, founder member of a band called Husker Do and then also had a band called Sugar, uh, both of which are heavily referenced by other artists. Yes. Um... So yeah, and here he's back doing what he does. Yeah. Um, this again, it's a solid album. Yeah. Um, again, I find it difficult to get under the skin entirely. So that's three in a row. Um, I found I found it's quite a short album. Thirty six minutes, people, which we like, uh, which <laughs> which helps. Um, but but again, I, I never felt I really caught quite quite into this album at yeah. all, and that's after repeated listenings, which is unusual. Um, actually, weirdly, the first track, "Low Season," I don't know what he does right at the beginning vocally, but it almost sounds like Noel Gallagher. 
<laughs> There's a real Noel Gallagher thing, even musically as well. It could be like the opening track to Noel Gallagher's next album. And then that sort of more of an Americanised draw yeah, yeah, yeah. kicks in. Um, so it clearly isn't. Uh, Pearl Jam again. Yeah, I'd like to see Noel going in this direction. Frankly. Yes, <laughs> Pearl Jam direction. But Pearl Jam again came up um, halfway through the album. Um, Fire in the City was an enjoyable track. That's about two thirds of the way in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just didn't quite, you know, for me. Yeah. How about uh, yourself? Well, I'm, I'm, I've been a bit of a Bob Mould fan over the, the, the years, so I quite like it a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah. Although he has written some tosh as well in the years, it has to be said. Yeah. Um, I don't know, it wasn't tosh, though. Yeah, but I, but I think it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of tried to distill into half an hour the whole, his whole career in a way. You've, so you've got things that are very Huskadoo-like, so Kid with a Crooked Face, um, which is a sound that was then kind of in some ways copied by a kind of fat, kind of fast kind of hard rock mm. almost verging on punk type pace, pacing that bands like the Foo Fighters for example yeah. have incorporated into their sound um, but also where I think he's strong, strongest and always, always been strongest is just writing really killer pop tunes uh, I think there are a couple on this album so uh, the single if you like off it I Don't Know You Anymore it's a perfect example of that and the kind of thing he did quite regularly with uh, Sugar. Um, and also uh, Forgiveness I really like and um, The War, which is probably my favourite song, which is a song about his relationship with his father um, and some of the lyrics in that I quite like. So he says, listen to my voice, it's the only weapon I kept from the war. Which I quite like the idea of that. Mm. And also then he goes on to say, you were the one who taught me most. I carry your remains, your emblem and your name. Nothing left will ever be the same. Which I quite like. Mm. Think of that. Yeah. Um, so I kind of probably like it more than you, more than you. Um, it, but it's not it's not a classic Bob Mould album but when it's good uh, I think it's very good and it has the blessing of being there six minutes long which is <laughs> is great because you it means that even if, even on the songs that you might be a bit kind of uh, not so sure about this you've only got two and a half minutes and it's done yeah. and you're on to the next one yeah uh, so yeah St sticking with the um loud music <laughs> and an angry man we have the return of Ice T and Body Count uh, fifth album from the band first in about eight or nine years I think um, and I do own the first two Body Count albums first one is pretty good and still played it not too long ago and it still holds up reasonably well yeah. second one is crap <laughs> uh, and to be fair it was quite crap at the time as well so uh, yeah. It was one of the things I bought and kind of thought, why did I buy that? It's got one good track on it. The rest yeah. of it's rubbish. Still the same. And the, 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 the difference now is the one track I thought was quite good, even that's a bit kind of, hmm, I'm not so sure about it anymore. Oh dear. Yeah. Um, and this album is uh, funny in, in many ways, because on first listen, I was definitely reaching for the uh, Gold Cobra Award for Worst Album of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking, that's I gonna, agree. I was thinking, that's going to be a quick, quick one. Don't have to be worried about this this year. Uh, and then I played it a second time and something weird started happening when I suddenly kind of thought oh I like the riff in that yeah I think, oh that's kicking and then oh yeah quite yeah that's I'm uh, thinking oh this oh, rocks yeah and thrashes um, but obviously nice riffs alone don't make a great album and you know we also needed the Iceman to come in lyrically uh, to see if we could really get the job done and yeah it kind of does in places and then not so much in other places so when it's right um, on stuff like get a job about you know getting off your ass and earning your own money not just relying on other people's handouts leaving aside the bit where he seems to <laughs> lie if you should become a or at least a become robber. at least become a robber a robber yeah yeah yeah, yeah buy a gun become a robber yeah yeah you know, at least then you kind of at least you are way. kind of up off your, your backside yeah. yeah back to rehab is kind of touchy-feely uh, <laughs> song about uh, about addiction and the pain it causes everyone and the lies addicts uh, tell uh, Wanna Be a Gangster uh, great track about idiots who kind of want to buy into the whole kind of gangster rap thing and like oh I want to do that um, and Pop Bubble which is his dig at rappers and other musicians who kind of compromise on their music to get a hit and don't basically sing about stuff that's going on just talk about all the champagne they're drinking and kind mm. of uh, all the women they're sleeping with and how many, how many cars and houses they own so you've got that on the kind of positive side and then on the less positive side uh, you've got the title track and other things like that where it's kind of um, tosh about how women are demasculated 
demasculizing men and yeah, misogynistic tops really. Um, that kind of vibe that's kind of not dispelled by the fact that there are a lot, lots of bitches and hoes on the album as well. Uh, I think as we've discussed before over podcasts over the last last few years, you know, it's it's 2014 now. Do we really need to still be singing about bitches and hoes? Mm. You know, it's a bit Three. kind of tired and yeah, hackneyed and lazy his, friendly. His re recover of his original um, Nine Nine problems. problems, yeah, in particular, it did sound pretty tired, attitude wise. Yeah, yeah, and there were other moments in the album where I just I felt I d- I don't I don't want to be one of those people that's offended by music because I don't want to be one of those people that's offended by music. I Indeed. sometimes I you know in in I I, I open I welcome attempts to offend me I'm that sort of person but there were times in this album I was like yeah I don't need to hear this you know um, anyway that aside um, I had a very similar experience yeah with with you um, uh, with you uh, as you as you did um, and indeed listened to it the first time thought well that's up to Tosh I don't have to listen to that again uh, but then found myself going back to it a couple of more times in thinking yeah musically very good riffs um and then obviously those, those, all those tracks you've mentioned very very cleverly done those that we spoke positively about yeah. um, a great wit in, in the writing in some of them um, and uh, yeah I, I, I want to mention two, two actually just one other track and that's Institutionalised yeah the Suicide Offences cover yeah um, which is um, it's quite funny I don't think it's intentionally funny I, I don't know do you think it's intentionally funny because uh, it yeah, you know, uh, it's a it's sort of sort of routine on opening the email account and not getting the password. It it sort of it sort of verged on Michael McIntyre routine for me, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of uh, <coughs> there you go. Um, yeah, there's a thought I didn't never thought I did. Yeah, exactly. Ice T does Michael McIntyre. Well, I had an email account, well, I couldn't get a password. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that so that, that sort of made me smile. <laughs> that, 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 that is a mashup I want to hear now. That's a mashup you want to hear now, yeah. isn't it? Michael McIntyre. Michael doing, McIntyre with Body Count. With yeah. Body Count doing that track. Um, if you listen to the track, you'll know what I mean. Maybe. In fact, fact <laughs> but if he can do that, if, if he could do Talk Shit, Get Shot as well, that'd be really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, I Will Always Love You, which. Uh, yeah, sadly not the Dolly cover. Sorry, we wanted. Sadly not the cover that we all wanted. Um, but again, a heartfelt. Well, the yeah. core. Well, <laughs> it's heartfelt up until the. Well, yeah. well, no. It's yeah. heartfelt all the way through, but yeah. the first lyrics are quite good and quite. Yeah. Yes. Meaningful. Yeah. And then it has the chorus. It has the chorus. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, that's 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 what it is. What it is. Um, Just to sort of, you're thinking about how bad the chorus is. Imagine Stevie Wonder singing, singing "I Just Called to Say I Love You." It's kind of up there with that kind of quality of cheese <laughs> it's cheesy um, so overall it's an album worth listening to <laughs> I was about to say on your own in a dark room wearing <laughs> yeah <laughs> some cans <laughs> yeah away from children away from children women and anyone you think might be vaguely offended by anything at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> apart from that apart it's from one, that it's, one it's fine <laughs> Even for Michael McIntyre fans, mm. fact, especially if you're for a Michael McIntyre fan, you should definitely go and buy his record and play it very loudly somewhere. So, so <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> coming swiftly to the end, yeah. uh, we'll do the file two uh, in a Warner, I think, because uh, they have the same similar vibe to them, I think, sound wise. Uh, it's the fourth album from Sharon Fenton. Are we there yet? Uh, I was a big fan of her 2012 album Tramp, which we reviewed here. Um, and also uh, Lana Del Rey's album, which yeah, is either called Ultra Violence or Ultra Violet. It's called Ultra something. I'm just going to call it Ultra. Ultra. The Depeche Mode album. That's that Depeche Mode album. The one we don't want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is a third album. Yeah. Just whilst Pete's doing that live, kind of looking up stuff on the internet. Thing. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Though. Do you um, remember last time I did that and I actually set off Spotify and it actually started playing something? Yeah. And we had to pay 50p to someone? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, try not to see that again. It's tra- tra- traumatic. Anyway, traumatic. Uh, Wait, carry on. Yeah, so I've picked these albums together partly because they both have a very um, relaxed. Ultra violence. Ultra violence. Thank okay. you. Very relaxed um, lilt to them, shall we say. 
Uh, to the point of uh, being soporific. Uh, depending on what kind of mood you're in. Mm. Um, and I think, obviously, with the Lana Del Rey album, what you're getting is the last Lana Del Rey album and more mm. in, that, in that kind of sense. Although the sound is slightly, I suppose, widened by the introduction of Black Keys um, singer, guitarist, Dan mm -hmm. Arbacus, producer. Mm -hmm. But it, I, it's kind of more of a lullaby kind of record. It does, yeah. 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 You know, it's kind of thing you can put on at bedtime and you'd be off sleeping minutes. <laughs> I have some disturbing dreams afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And that's partly because the opening track, Cruel, Cruel World, does go on for six and a half minutes for no apparent reason. You know, it, it's 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 a David Lynch soundtrack. It record. is. It's very David Lynch, yeah. In fact, if you combine, if you, if you did half this album and, and half the Sharon Van Etten album, you, they really wouldn't be out of place at all on a David Lynch soundtrack. No. Um, so, Lan Del Rey album, um, slightly more, it's the slightly more polished record, I think, of the two. Um, and I really like the bit where she's doing kind of cocktail twins impersonation in the course of Shades of Cool tempo change uh, on West Coast Brooklyn Baby is a really great song mm, and I think it's one, one of these albums where I was thinking about it again the other day and if you listen to each track individually yeah it's kind of hard to fault any track on the album however listening to them as an album it yeah. does have that thing like I said that you can just find yourself depending on what mood you're in just switching off totally and you, you, you just you're gone and you can't remember what you're listening to who it is anything and or which song's which yeah um, Sharon Van Etten album has a, a similar kind of thing thing to it I've listened to it four times now twice I've really liked it twice I've felt meh starts off really great I think the first four tracks are really really strong and I really like the kind of mix between real drums and synth drums mm. over the first few tracks as well but then it, again it tends to just go and you get lost and it's kind of sleep inducing and then yeah. suddenly every time the sun comes up brings it back to life at the end and you yes. go oh that's really good yeah. I like that and you think oh yeah I do like this album yeah it's yeah. good that so so I, I have similar feelings about both records and in both cases I think in the right frame of mind they're both decent records yeah um the cover both um very similar experience in that um, I really wanted to like both these records I've come away perhaps disappointed by both mm. more so the Sharon Van Etten album which yes I did find very soporific as you put it um, and and uh, despite listening to it repeated times still haven't found that, that connection <coughs> really bless you yeah. um, Ultra Violence on the other hand I, there was more to keep me interested yeah. and I think that's definitely a grower um, so I think that's an album I can go back to but never a good sign perhaps when you're reaching for the previous record just to be absolutely sure you've got yeah. it right which I did do reviewing this album I did reach back for Born to Die and um, and it's quite a marked difference actually um, in, in that yes this is more of a lullaby <laughs> it's a black lullaby I can tell you um, whereas there was more of that sort of smoky um club scene vibe to the mm. to the to the, to yeah. the previous record um, which is removed here and apart from the last couple of tracks where she does drop the vocals down into that lower range and so it's on thing down there, um, which I think is brilliant it's a real strength so so why she didn't do it for the 80% of the previous of the album up until that point I'm not sure well they usually get that they remind me I thought you were doing it maybe suggesting that she was doing a and Vic Reeves impersonation. <laughs> what song am I singing? <laughs> In a club style yeah. <laughs> bit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> throwback. Um, it, so it's it's a good it's it's a good record in, in the sense that um, as you say more polished, um, <coughs> some better tracks towards the end. I think when the tempo picks up. Um, kind of the same with the Sharon Van album. It does pick up at the end. Yeah, so, right the I mean, the ultra ultra violence. The big problem I had right quite early on is that um, I was only on track three. I was about twenty minutes in, and actually, as it turns out, I wasn't actually far off twenty minutes in. No, <laughs> pretty much and, once you've got through the first four tracks on uh, yeah. ultra violence, and then it sort of picks up a pace. Yeah, but um, the thing is, once you, you once you, that the first four tracks is pretty much the length of the Bob Mould album. Yeah, 
and you're only you're only on track three, and I can I can see myself sort of drifting off. And I'm like, "Ooh, this is going to be a difficult one." Uh, but actually, stick with it. Um, it's I think there's a good album in there somewhere. Um, so uh, yeah, I think over time I'm getting more positive about this record. I think it's the one out of the six that will probably feature highest in end of year lists yeah. amongst the critics. And I even, even even though I also think it will also feature in some of the critics' worst of lists as well. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of those kind of albums. And I think she's a, the kind of artist. I think the same happened with last album. I think she mm. kind of divides people. Yeah. I yeah, think, I think you either get the shtick. You get or, the shtick, or you, or you just kind of think, no. You don't. Just... I've, I've seen critics sort of refer to her as she's the most disinterested pop star they've come across for a long time. Yeah, well, she was talking about how she'd be dead, be dead and things like that. Yeah, yeah. which I, I think people are like turned off by. Oddly. But, oddly. Um, but actually, um, you know, it's, it's an act, people. <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that it will probably feature in a list of mine somewhere. As to where it'll feature in that list, so only time will tell. Yes. Join us again for that time. <laughs> Whenever that may be. In the future. Ta ta. You've been listening to the CTTV Music Podcast.